So in this video, we're going to be going over how to prepare for the AMD Ryzen 9000 launch, also known as a Zen 5 launch. So for those of you that are into building PCs, and if you're on an older system like an AM4 system, for example, or an older Intel platform, and you're thinking about switching to the upcoming Ryzen 9000 series, there are a couple of pitfalls and caveats that you need to be aware of if you're going to actually do that upgrade at launch. So namely, the main thing is the motherboards that are available that can support Zen 5 most likely will be in the stores and in the e-tailer warehouses like Amazon's warehouse, Newegg's warehouse, for example. And they'll probably have older BIOSes that do not recognize the Ryzen 9000 CPUs. So you're going to have to update the BIOS and most people that have built PCs before already know how to update the BIOS. You probably go into the BIOS itself and update it that way. However, with this, you cannot do that because the CPUs are too new and the most likely the BIOS that's shipping with the motherboard or is already in the warehouse does not recognize Ryzen 9000. So you have to, you're going to have to use BIOS flashback and not everybody may be familiar with that. So that's what this video is going to go over. So what you're going to need is you're going to need, first of all, a USB thumb drive like this. The smaller, the better. This is a four gigabyte. The reason why I say smaller is better is because it needs to be formatted to FAT32, which I, as far as I know, doesn't really work above 32 gigabytes. So if you have a 32 gigabyte thumb drive or smaller, you can assume that it's formatted correctly, but you're going to want to double check that the file format is FAT32 so that the BIOS chip on the motherboard will recognize it and can actually do the update. If you just use one that is NTFS or it's too large, like a 128 gigabyte thumb drive, for example, or a 64 gigabyte thumb drive, those might not work because the BIOS on the motherboard might not be able to interact with that file system correctly. So just keep in mind that is like step one. Make sure you have the correct thumb drive uh, so that it will work with the BIOS. Number two, you're going to need to have another PC or a Mac or something. You're going to have to have access to a computer that already works so that you can download the correct BIOS file for your motherboard and copy it over to the thumb drive. For those of you that are buying brand new day one, new Ryzen 9000, new X670 or B650 motherboard, you're going to have to go through this procedure. You're going to have to update the BIOS using BIOS flashback. So you're going to need to prepare ahead of time. Like you're going to have to use an older computer. In this case, I have a laptop here to copy the BIOS from the computer onto the thumb drive. Now, depending on your motherboard brand, in this case, we have a Gigabyte Aorus Master here. So that means this one needs to be renamed to Gigabyte.bin. Um, the BIOS manual will tell you, though, like what the format needs to be. But in general, they should be FAT32. So this is the manual for the ASUS Crosshair Hero that we're using as an example, representing ASUS motherboards. We're going to cover every single brand, the four major brands. So we will not be talking about BioStar, unfortunately, but we are going to cover the four. The process is pretty much the same for all of them with a few different caveats. So in the case of ASUS, ASUS calls this feature BIOS Flashback. The one thing about ASUS is that the BIOS file needs to be named a certain way for their for the BIOS on the motherboard to actually interact with that file and consider it a valid file, in addition to the checksum and those sort of things. So they tell you here, the first step, insert USB storage device into the BIOS flashback port. So we already know the BIOS flashback port, in this case, would be the one with the BIOS name highlighted over it. Then you want to download the BIOS file, put it on the thumb drive, but then you want to manually rename the file. In this case, it's with ASUS motherboards, specifically just ASUS motherboards. It's easier with all the other brands, but ASUS specifically requires that you rename the file to a specific name that is unique only to that motherboard. So if you have a Crosshair X670E Hero, you would rename the file to CX670EH.cap. And if you're 
adding the file extension, you want to make sure that in your Windows folder settings, it's not hiding the file extensions. Dot cap. So that is the the name for this specific motherboard. Now, if this was a different ASUS motherboard, like if this was a Tough or a Prime or a Strix, the name would be different. It would not be using this name. So keep that in mind. Now, the nice thing about ASUS, though, is they recognize that it's complicated in the sense that every single motherboard requires a different name for the file. So they have this executable file that's bundled in the zip folder when you download the BIOS file. So make sure you're downloading the correct BIOS for your motherboard. The way you do that is you simply search on the internet for your specific motherboard name. So you need to know the name of the motherboard. And then you click on the support on the upper right. And then you're going to click on drivers and tools. And then click on BIOS and firmware. And then that will list typically the latest one will be at the top. So you can see here this one as of July 19th. So next, we're going to look at ASRock. So ASRock is the exact same procedure in the sense that you need to download the BIOS file, put it on the thumb drive, and then the button pressing and all that stuff is pretty much going to be the same. The difference is with ASRock, it's much easier. All you got to do is rename the file, the BIOS file that you download to creative.rom. It's all in bold right there. So creative.rom. So basically, they tell you here in their manual for their motherboards, download the latest file from the ASRock website, copy the BIOS file to the USB flash drive, make sure the file system of the flash drive is FAT32, extract the BIOS file from the zip file, you're going to want to put that on the thumb drive, and then rename the file to creative.rom. Then plug the USB drive into the BIOS flashback port, Press the BIOS flashback switch for about three seconds. Then the LED starts to blink. Now this LED will be on the back near where the thumb drive is plugged in. So you're going to want to look for that. Wait until the LED stops blinking, indicating that the BIOS flashing has been completed. If the LED turns solid green, this means that the BIOS flashback is not operating properly. Interesting that they use green solid, but it's not correct. Please make sure that you plug the USB drive to the USB flashback port. So that means that basically you got to make sure that you have it renamed to creative.rom. You cannot just download the BIOS and throw it on the thumb drive and expect it to work. The other thing too is make sure that the thumb drive is formatted to FAT32. It cannot be NTFS. It cannot be of a certain size. So like a huge 128 gigabyte Thumb drive will probably not work. It'll probably not be recognized. So you need to have a smaller one, like 32 gigabytes or smaller is better. Gigabyte, it's pretty much the exact same procedure. Gigabyte calls it Q Flash Plus. So here they tell you the same steps before you begin. From Gigabyte's website, download the latest BIOS that matches your motherboard model. Now with Gigabyte, because they do a lot of different revisions, you want to make sure that the BIOS file you download from Gigabyte's website is the correct revision for your motherboard. And the way that you would know that is on the manual, they tell you, you, you can look at a Gigabyte motherboard physically in the bottom left corner of the motherboard, there will be a rev number. This assumes that you don't have access to the box, but if you have the motherboard box, the motherboard box will have a sticker on it that will also tell you the revision. But that's where you can go to look visually on a Gigabyte motherboard to determine what revision. But you want to make sure you have the correct BIOS that matches that revision. Because a BIOS for revision 1.0 will be different, for example, from a revision 1.1 or 1.2, etc. System needs to be off, just like with the others. But you need to rename the file right here. So you'll at, copy it to a USB flash drive. And again, they tell you, note, the USB flash drive must use FAT32 1612 file system. So any of these will work. I mean, that means that the BIOS chip on the motherboard can recognize these different file systems. So most likely it's going to be FAT32. But the file needs to be on that USB flash drive, and it needs to be renamed to gigabyte.bin gigabyte.bin and they also emphasize all capital letters now i don't know if that actually matters 
but what I would do is I would name it exactly as it shows in the manual. All right, and finally we have MSI. Now MSI is basically the exact same steps as Gigabyte, except you rename the BIOS file to msi.rom. So it's, it's kind of like Gigabyte where you rename the file to gigabyte.bin, but in MSI you rename the file to msi.rom. But once you have the BIOS file named correctly, so in this case, I would rename this file to gigabyte.bin. Make sure the extension is .bin, not .bin.rom, or .cap. You have to remove the extra part there. Make sure it's .rom. So then what you'll do is you have the BIOS file on here. So now we can go to our motherboard. So if this is the X670 motherboard. For example, you're going to want to plug the USB drive into the port that says BIOS on it. So this is the one. So we go in there like that. And then you would do the update. So you would have to connect the power. You have to connect your 24 pin power here and you'd have to connect the eight pin EPS plug here. So the power cables need to be plugged in. You do not need to install the CPU. You do not need to install RAM. You just need to have the power cables connected and the USB thumb drive needs to be in the correct port. Once that's done on a lot of these AMD motherboards, there will be a button that you would press and then that would cause the LED to start flashing near the button typically or it would be near the actual port. Now in this motherboard, the button is actually down here on the board but if you press that then you'd see it flash and we'll go for about five six minutes sometimes up to seven eight minutes i think gigabyte recommends giving it six to eight minutes to do the bios update so the flashing will continue to happen until it completes at which point the flashing will turn off then you know that it is ready so if it's not flashing if it's a solid green or if it's not Lighting up, that typically means that it doesn't recognize the file that is on the drive or the drive is formatted incorrectly or one of those things or the drive is too large, like it's a 128 gig drive or something. So that's typically how it's done. Those are kind of the prerequisite steps to prepare for Zen 5 or the Ryzen 9000 series. This would have been avoidable if the x870 and x870e motherboards were available at launch but unfortunately they won't be launching alongside the processors they will come later so be on the lookout for that so you can either update upgrade early be an early adopter or you can wait a couple of weeks or months whenever those newer motherboards show up and you can update and avoid this entire process so let me know what you guys think in the comments below and i will see you guys in the next one